Welcome to this lunchtime session. We are ready to roll, so I will turn it over to uh, our panelists. Hi, welcome everyone. I am going to share my slideshow shortly and we'll get started. All right, you have joined the expert panel, Collaborative Learning Experience Design During Organizational Change. I'm Sophia Strickfadden and all of the panelists will introduce themselves in a minute. Uh, to get us started, if you would please join this bit.ly link, which someone will paste in the chat shortly. It's two questions just to give us a sense of who's joining and what role you play in the course design process um, in, in your situation. So go ahead and open that bit.ly link, answer those questions, and we'll wait just a few more minutes, maybe one to two minutes. And just to note for everyone, there are two questions there in the next button is in the upper right if you're looking to move forward um, from the first to the second. Wonderful. A few more minutes. I'm not seeing any more participants really join us. So I'm going to go to the, the results, which should be oh, one moment there underneath everything. All right, so we have a few instructional designers, admin faculty, senior instructional designer. So a mix of designers and faculty, project managers, wonderful. Instructor, yeah, about what we expected. Instructional designers, faculty, graduate teaching assistant. This accessibility assistive technology. Okay. Yay. And then what roles do you play with course design? We have majority tied to instructor faculty and overseeing designs and curriculum. We have a good number of course implementation roles here and in instructional designers and subject matter experts. And of course you can um, select many on that one. So many of you are probably playing many roles out of these five and probably some additional roles that don't relate to course design. Awesome, great. All right, so we have a good sense. We have a lot of faculty, course designers and curriculum uh, designers, some administrators, that type of thing. Thank you for participating in our poll. That gives us a good sense of who you are and it gives you a sense of who everyone is. Um, so this instructional design group was convened uh, in March of 2021. And our main task was to develop a course framework for combining all of our community college online courses into one online structure. As you might have guessed, that was a much broader uh, and more complex task than you, we initially were given. So our fluid timeline was about this, where in November 2020, we got a Colorado online project plan, which um, essentially is decentralizing academics, centralizing some of our course online course delivery. 
And we are about at uh, refining the framework and still collecting data. Uh, April 2021, we thought we would meet a deadline of having a prototype ready. But of course, in building the prototype and collaborating, uh, we weren't quite ready for that. There were a lot of things to consider, especially in combining all of our colleges and cultures together. So now we'll introduce ourselves as panelists and I'll kick it off with Amanda. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, my name is Amanda Hardman. I am an instructional designer at Arapahoe Community College. And I also teach in an adjunct capacity in the uh, Colorado Community College system. I also have uh, quite a bit of experience with Quality Matters as a reviewer and workshop facilitator. And there are things I like to do outside of work as well, such as crochet, play piano, and raise a family. So my role in this uh, project has been, um, you know, things I enjoy doing are to be an active listener, to try to keep track of what we are naming as our priorities, and then to offer feedback back through the conversations and uh, project pieces that we start putting together related to um, where we see our direction going, what our priorities are, uh, what we're hearing through this messy process of design um, in, in terms of feedback that we're getting, um, as well as to keep track of some of our non-negotiables, such as establishing quality standards and accessibility, as well as trying to keep that learner experience, the student experience in mind. And from a technology standpoint, I will also share, since we're in a technology conference, that some of the technologies that we've used through this process have included a test instance of the learning management management system, um, Zoom with all its features, SharePoint with all of the challenges of keeping track of various documents in various places. And I have appreciated that one choice that we kind of ended up making, um, and you'll hear from someone else who took on this role, was to kind of limit how many people were like active in the test instance of the learning management system at once. And we kind of kept track of what our decisions were on SharePoint Word documents with screenshots. Um, because as you might imagine, there are a lot of challenges that come with design by committee. So just a little tech note there as well. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm Grace Whitaker. Um, I'm I'm a senior instructional designer with CCC Online, which is the um, arm at the Community College System Office that is trying to um, you help evolve into what will be called Colorado Online. Um, that includes a lot of, of particular um, tasks and duties, which I won't necessarily go into. Um, I'm also a mom and a sports enthusiast, um, incurable wanderlust, I love to travel. Um, in terms of this group, how I contributed once we were brought together and convened to work was to help to create kind of the organizational um, the organization of the shared space of the SharePoint to get um, the data that we started to acquire um, organized to the folders that made it easy to to review and um, easy for folks who were going to be adding to it to know where to place that we were um, started out very early collecting data trying to see what um, the navigation and the organization uh, was that was happening at all the colleges so that we were aware of how they were using their learning management system. Um, because we were very fluid when we first started, I initially kind of got into the role of doing a weekly summary from our meetings and kind of setting us up with to do's and action items so that we weren't so loose that we actually didn't move anywhere. We had no traction. So that helped to kind of push us forward. Um, and we'll, you'll hear more about kind of how uh, all of that came together as we get uh, into what the, the reality of the timeline was. You can go on to the next one. Thank you, Sophia. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Sint. I'm a, also a senior instructional designer at CCC Online with Grace. Um, we share a lot of responsibilities, do things together. Um, I'm from Wyoming. I'm a cowgirl, huge Wyoming fan, and I play the oboe. And like Grace, I like to travel. Um, 
mainly how I contributed to this project was just keeping the team focused. Um, we tend to go down rabbit holes with nine different people from nine different perspectives. And I kind of my job to say, all right, that's good, but let's get back on what we need to be doing for this week. And then I also help summarize data of the different contents. Um, and I think generally just my voice of 25 years plus experience designing the instruction that helped, helps short and sweet. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Denton and I'm the instructional designer at Pueblo Community College. Uh, I've started teaching here almost 30 years ago in the English department part-time and um, taught online for probably at least 15 of those years. Um, and also taught high school English in Rye for 12 years. And one of the biggest pieces I bring to this group is, is the study that I've done with seat time for online classes and making sure that what we offer in an online class is equivalent, not more and not less to what we would offer in a face-to-face -face class and, and what those differences are, how we can make sure that the online experience is just as good. Um, and I also helped with building the initial wireframe for us to start playing with and, and seeing what um, the content could be structured like. And so we could start kind of pulling some things together and, and piecing bits and pieces from our, all of our different perspectives. Um, and I, I'm glad that I've been able to participate with this group and, and bring PCC's version of online learning into the discussion. And outside of that, I'm a, a book lover and a yarn lover and a cat lover and uh, just a little old lady. Let's go on. Sophie is up. Yeah, and I will introduce myself last. I am Sophia Strick Fadden. I'm an e-learning technologist, which really is just a way that uh, to say that I, I focus more on the interactive and concrete ideas of how we build our courses at uh, Colorado Community Colleges online. I'm a Denver native, compassionate coworker, and a soon-to-be mom. Yay! Uh, I contributed mostly to this panel by derailing us, honestly, but um, I also have been translating our conversations into concrete items like mocking up our navigation for the the test instance in the learning management system doing really simple things like wireframes for that navigation or for how our, our wireframe uh, excuse me how our weekly modules might look like we had a lot of discussion on well should it be weekly or should it be module or should it be something unnamed or topic <laughs> uh, related we really went back and forth on a lot of things because of how, how many different methods and styles we're attempting to combine in this project and in this task, um, which brings me to the strategic thinking. So uh, <clears throat> I feel as though part of my big role in this is to think strategically about how to address some of the ideas and perspectives that have come up in this, in this work with nine different people with five different campuses and even more represented with our data. Um, I'm also concentrated on the online student experience design similar to Nancy in, okay, well, if we do that, then what does it look like as a student? For instance, if we have 13 different learning management systems um, and the students are going to be enrolled in various courses from various colleges, will they have six to 13 different logins, that's not great. <laughs> and that's not even to mention the variation in how the courses look in the online structure. So um, this is part of our work. That's part of our task is to streamline it so that it is an effective design and an effective de delivery without compromising the individual expression of each college and each instructor. And we are not the only ones <laughs> who are working on this. So we have representatives from Arapaho Community College, Colorado, um, excuse me, 
PCC online. <laughs> yes, Colorado Community College is online. Why did that throw me off? That was odd. Uh, that's, of course, Kathy Grace and I and our fourth member, Christy Torland. Um, and then Front Range Community College, Pikes Peak Community College, Pueblo Community, Community Colleges. And we are um, really looking forward to getting more involved and in collaborating with all of the other subgroups that have been working together on this project. So we started with nine people um, and we've grown to 11 and we'll pull, pull others in as we go forward or we might even break into multiple groups because we know that this, um, as we grow, we end up having sort of that distribution of responsibility and um, sometimes it's really hard to collaborate virtually when you have more than about nine people present. <laughs> All right, so we showed you a timeline before of what we projected to be our fluid timeline. But realistically, it looks something like this, which I will pass the baton to Amanda to explain. Sure, thank you, Sophia. Well, what we wanted to communicate here was just something about what it feels like to be in the middle of a design process, right? Anyone who's involved in design, this kind of looks a little familiar to you, but then when you have design by committee, things get a little messier, right? So I, I may be exaggerating a little bit here that early on, <laughs> you know, the question was, hey, can you have a prototype of what um, a course structure could look like for Colorado Online at in two weeks? It might have been a little longer than that, but not by much, right? So you kind of get the, the top down um, uh, ideal vision, the ideal results. And then at that point, we have to kind of figure out, well, what's realistic? And uh, what's realistic based on what we know now is different than what's realistic three months down the road after we come up with all sorts of other dependencies that we need to consider. So, right, this idea of can the prototype be completed in two weeks, three weeks? You know, the answer is no. Um, then we have to decide how to move forward. And we were actually starting with a much larger ID committee that this particular group was kind of an offshoot of. So at the point at which we said no, the idea was, well, well then maybe we need a smaller group to kind of focus on that. And so the larger ID committee continued back in the spring. And at the same time, our work group kind of got established. So then we had to come to the center point here. Well, let's start figuring out how we're gonna go about designing aspects of a wireframe. But the thing is that every time we would have a conversation, we would realize another dependency of, oh, well, how many LMSs are we working with? Or wait a minute, have we heard the perspective of faculty? Or wait a minute, what about our students? If this is a student-centered project, like what data do we need? And then it's like, well, okay, let's figure out like one piece of this. Let's focus on navigation. What could navigation look like? But then we still have to go back and gather uh, system data about you know, which tools are being used to what extent across all of our 13 colleges. And even just trying to explain this to you, it gets messy quickly, right? And it's hard to keep track of what we were doing at what time. So that's the idea here is that every time we realized that we needed to gather data we would gather that data and come back to the center point regarding designing some aspect of the wireframe. But then we'd realize, wait, we need other data. Let's go get that and then come back. But then that raised another question and another question. And um, so all these ideas of who have we presented to, who have we gathered data from, um, this is just kind of a, a, even a small look <laughs> at what that has meant. Um, and then uh, one of the great things about that, though, is that I feel like our group, right, we're just even a small group of this larger Colorado online app project. And because we started so early, one of the great things is that I feel like our group has had some influence um, in making some of these dependencies known back to the larger project team. For instance, when we realized, you know, we really need a group of faculty, an initial group that we can talk to about decisions that we're making and kind of on an ongoing basis have that faculty perspective. So we sent that back to the larger project team who then decided, oh yeah, we kind of do need that. Let's develop a faculty advisory committee. So that kind of conversations, they've been going on among our groups of nine to 11, but then we've had some conversations back to the larger project team as well, which I think has been wonderful. And then when we realize 
oh, a, a dependency, like how are we going to manage syllabi, right? Then we start talking about tool solutions. Um, you know, we start talking about the technology that we'll need, and then we can send that back to the larger project team. Um, so this is just a, a look again at what can be mapped out on a linear timeline <laughs> in actuality and lived experience is much messier than that. Um, so let me now pass it off to anyone else from our group who would like to add something about this experience of the process. So I wanted to chime in because to give us people a sense of the types of data that we gathered, right? We, we felt the need as we focused on navigation to see what everyone else was doing. We got screenshots from every community college in the system of what their navigation looks like. We looked at how it was placed. We looked at how um, they determined a priority from the left of the screen over to the right of the screen, and we ranked it. Um, we actually did a great deal of due diligence to make sure we were bringing in the perspectives of all the colleges and how they were currently working. Um, we looked at the types of tools that they use and make and have active in their systems because there is a certain element of um, equity that we realized that needed to be presented by making sure that there's a baseline set of tools that every college is going to have access to when we go to this new model and it won't be um, a, a, an issue of haves and haves nots because of a cost issue we've looked at syllabi we looked at home pages in the learning management system that place where students come and first start into a course um, and that that is what started to really just push up all of these other questions about well what does it mean for someone to come to a course home page what does it mean if they've also got um, their home college and then the college that they're taking a course from and how does that come together on colorado line and none of these decisions has been made it's just surfacing the questions and those have been pushed out to larger committees who are addressing them so we we ourselves will make no decisions we will make recommendations um, and that's what we're providing through the, the framework and through um, a demonstration of what a maybe a fully complete course that someone could make use of if they don't wish to use a framework but it will all be recommendations that will go to our, the ID subcommittee above us we'll then take it to the presidents and um, Landon Prius above him so um, don't let us give the impression that we're we're running the show, but we are doing our due diligence to show that all of our all of our decisions have been data driven and we didn't just pull them out of the air based on our particular opinions. Sometimes we don't necessarily agree with the data, but we kind of looked at what's best for what we will recommend to uh, all of the colleges. And I'll open it up to anyone else who has comments. <laughs> one, one other thing that we've we've kind of realized, like you said, things that are outside of our scope of what we can make decisions on, but things that will have to be decided by someone. And, and a lot of those are, you know, shared sources like library and online tutoring and, and those kind of issues that are completely outside of what we are challenged to do, but they are going to impact what we need to incorporate into the design system and and have that ready so just bringing those things up to future committees who will have those responsibilities um, has been another kind of a big thing that's come up in this group just noticing what needs to be addressed right and i think tracking a lot of these questions and dilemmas and dependencies that have come up uh, actually has moved some of the process forward in, in a, outside of our group <laughs> is a good way to say it. We, we've come up with these questions and sort of said, well, we can't answer this. We have no control over this. Here's our recommendation from a student learning experience design, course design, consistency perspective. Um, and then it starts that conversation in the administrative um, committee, which I think has been helpful, but um, in, in other ways, I think it's it's highlighted the complexity from a logistical standpoint that we, you can't just build a prototype of an online course 
design <laughs> in two weeks without knowing, you know, how, how some of this is going to work and whether or not there will even be a budget to have a list of shared tools and learning, learning tools to integrate into the learning management system. So um, that I, I think is part of the reason why we've been so effective as a panel or as a, a group, a working group, is we're bringing up these questions and again, Kathy keeps us focused and says, but right now we need to prepare a presentation for the faculty advisory council. Um, but it does come up on a weekly basis, these things that we're like, but we still don't know blank. Um, and someone like Nancy might bring up, well, at Pueblo Community College, we utilize this tool for all of our science courses, but it might com be completely different from the rest of the colleges. So it's really important to have people at the table and those voices at the table to learn those things firsthand and in real time, as opposed to ma making a decision, making a, a proposal, passing it up and across and whatever, and then learning three months later that it's just not possible because of whatever reason. Um, it's too expensive. The students can't use it at all the campuses. It doesn't meet our criteria for whatever quality reason. Uh, it's so, again, we just were really grateful to have been connected and been working together for this long and uh, essentially been a pretty proactive group in this transition. And I, I think I want to, it's been said before, but I, I am actually extremely proud of the work that we have been doing together and the collaboration that we have had um, for it not necessarily being anybody's direct job <laughs> to come together weekly and to have the discussions and to play with um, the, the scenarios really that could happen and to hear the challenges, the positives, the negatives and the potential challenges has been um, and with such an open group to be able to kind of then turn that and say, well, how can we deal with that? Or who should actually address this to make sure it's actually talked about system-wide? Um, I, I do believe we have been extremely effective. And, and as others have said, we've started the conversation by being the pesky question asker, askers <laughs> um, and not relinquishing um, or stepping back when we didn't necessarily get any response like to keep bringing it up so that at least someone will take that and run with it. All right, are we ready for some questions? <laughs> that, that essentially is an overview of how we've been working together and why we've been working together and the dilemmas of that we've encountered uh, along with some information about where our strengths are individually and also as a group. Uh, we do want you to submit questions. Um, so we thought there would be a QA in Zoom. I also thought I deleted this from the slide. I apologize, please ignore that. You're welcome to put your questions in the Zoom chat, or I've shared a Padlet link that I can repost to the chat um, that you're welcome to add your insights, responses, questions to. And uh, we'll sort of in live real time, try to address some of them. Uh, and I don't see any yet, but we have a few questions prepared. So fear not, we will not leave you hanging from here forward. Um, again, this is the bit.ly link and that'll take you to a Padlet. Same with the QR code. If you want to activate your camera on your phone or your tablet, there should be a way to pop up that URL directly in your browser. And while we're waiting, I could probably maybe be a little proactive. Um, I could imagine that one of the questions many of you might ask would be, hey, can you show us your wireframe? Can you show us what you're doing, what you have so far? And the answer, unfortunately, is no at the moment, because we are still in the midst of gathering feedback from our faculty advisory group. And it would, um, out of a kind of a show of respect for the work that we're doing, we won't necessarily be displaying that work before we've actually re gotten the response and feedback that we need to make those tweaks to then just put it out to the larger faculty community for the community college system. So I apologize now if that's, if that might be a question you would ask. And we thought maybe we'd have something to show you by now <laughs> at the time that we submitted our abstract. Um, but it really is a complicated process with a lot of things to consider. And it, um, 
it's it's a it, it's scary for some people. I, I want to address that, but at the same time, if we work together and we consider all the things that we can consider, we can address a lot from from the get go, as opposed to waiting three years and going, well, that didn't work. Um, and there will still be things that we learn that didn't go well, right? Um, everyone knows that that's sort of how life is. Um, but yeah, that we we can't share anything right now. Thank you, Grace, for mentioning that. All right, so we are getting some Adam, questions in the yes in the chat. Yes. So, <laughs> Adam, um, I'll read the question, and anyone on the panel is welcome to jump in. What specific discoveries along the way were most novel or surprising to you thus far? How have your goals changed specifically and what most excites you at this stage of the process? Can I answer? Yeah, I can start to answer. I, I actually, um, I don't know if they were necessarily surprising as comforting, but one of the, the big discoveries is, and that we've all kind of realized is that we're not so different in how we're approaching um, online delivery. And we are not very different um, for the majority in how we're utilizing um, either navigation or tools or looking to provide um, you know, academic freedom for folks. So that was um, something you hope for. You hope that there's going to be this, this um, understanding and agreement we'll be able to get to something that is wonderful and unique and and then through the process we're discovering we're kind of all in this same space how we display items in navigation may vary differently a little bit but we are for the most part um, utilizing the same navigation when there is one and um, giving students a sense of a common front door or trying to give them a sense of a common front door when they come into um, an online course space. And so refining that and getting more feedback and seeing if there's other things that that really we, we could um, we could sort of break out. It would be something new that is is agreed upon and, and works for the, all this the college system is something we're kind of looking forward to. And I've only answered the the first part of the question on if somebody wants to grab the second part of it. I want to jump in and say that something that has excited me about the process in that it builds energy for me around the process has been the positive feedback that we have been receiving so far from our Learning Technology Council, from the faculty group that has initially seen our demonstration of the wireframe. Um, it's just, you know, even though they can point out specific things that we need to think about further, I mean, that's exactly what we want from those groups is that sort of feedback and the willingness to share that and the positive responses to what they're seeing overall has just been um, affirming to have so many people who are on board with this idea of improving the learner experience of their online courses that they are taking throughout the system. And I, th I think I'll add that one of the things that I found most exciting was just how quickly we became a fairly cohesive team, even though I don't think most of us knew each other. A few of us knew some of the others, but I didn't know everybody for sure. And how quickly we started to, to gel into a group. And also I'll reiterate what Grace said in how similar our processes and procedures are across the system as opposed to, well, they do it this way and they do it this way and we're never gonna get a one consensus. For instance, when we looked at the syllabi, they all have almost exactly the same components, whether they're required by the system or by the college or just within each department, they're all very much the same. I think that's one of the things we discovered was, as Grace said, everything we do we're doing from an ID UDL perspective and we're all on the same page. I can add, I, oh, sorry, Nancy here, uh, this will be quick. I think one of the, the most effective ways that we started off with is we immediately created a shared responsibility in editing and reviewing documents. Um, we, 
we like the team at CCC online didn't meet separately from this group, unless we had volunteered ourselves to, uh, we didn't meet separately as like a foursome going, oh, this is what we think should happen. It was a shared responsibility in that individually we would go in and add our contributions and edits and comments. Um, and I think that's kept it pretty even and um, fair overall without one institution or college really having a lot of influence. Um, so that, that has helped a lot. So having that technology, that SharePoint, those shared documents, um, the test instance where everyone could get in there and it's not just me going in and building some navigation that no one else, <laughs> no one else has access to edit um, or review in a functional environment that has helped, it, it's helped a lot to share that responsibility evenly. We have a couple more questions. I'm gonna answer Lee's about have you looked at other systems in the country that have successfully done this? Actually, we have hi had hired a consultant from California who had been part of the team that did this for them. So yes, we did look at other systems in the country that successfully did this. And she was able to help us quite a bit as we were starting this process off. And as we are, as we are discovering some of these dependencies that really have to be addressed before we can go forward, um, those are also triggering, well, who else has done this? If this is, these are your two options, who else has done this in the country? And we're looking for those systems so we can get there, you know, the, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the, of the process and what it, uh, what it does, did and what it's currently doing maybe um, to the way that they run, um, their learning management system or their, um, or their, um, uh, we'll call it common libraries or um, services that they're spread across. So every time we have a dependency like that, we are definitely looking like who has done this and, and can we talk to them and figure out what they went through and hopefully avoid <laughs> some of those uh, potholes. For me, one of the encouraging things about working with that consultant at the beginning was that she was watching us come together and gel as a group and the kinds of things that we were coming up with as far as how we wanted to manage this and the kinds of questions we were posing. And she was very encouraging that, wow, you guys are really on the ball with this. You, you are grasping right away what has to be done and, and what the scope of this is. And so that was just really encouraging to know that we were, even though we were just starting out, we were at least on the right road. So that, I definitely would encourage anyone else who's trying to do a major project like this, find others who have been there and, and talk to them. Yeah, I, uh, I think one of the, ex did we already say the California community college system was one that we had looked at? Um, and then there, there have been others that have come across the way, but you're welcome to post it to the Padlet. Um, if you have a link or an idea or remember of an institution or a system doing essentially what we're trying to do. Um, Lee Christopher asks, um, what has been your biggest obstacle? I don't know, that's a, that's a hard one for me to answer off the top of my head. What, what I would say is some of it is exactly related to Jennifer Maxwell's question below, what is being done to standardize lab classes, curriculum, anything really. Um, coming up with standards, quality standards, consistency standards, expectations for instruction and accountability. Um, that is an obstacle that really has held us back because we can't make those decisions. We can make recommendations, um, but it's it's a huge endeavor uh, to sort of compile all of that and decide what it would look like. Um, and since it's sort of outside of our hands, there are a lot of things on the concrete side of wireframing or testing something with users like a faculty advisory council. It's really hard to test a wireframe with a common navigation that might integrate a lab course um, when there are no standards and there, there is no framework of quality determined yet. And, uh, oh, sorry, I was gonna say, just in terms of the obstacles, I think they're, um, they continue to come and they're, they're repeated, right? It's the discovery of dependencies and we, 
we, I know as a group, would like answers quicker than we are able to get them. Um, but I think that the biggest obstacles, they kind of change over because it's like we come up with one and I feel like we have been able to push it forward and see that there are other committees that are starting to look at it. So the obstacles keep surfacing, but it's it's the, the I think the good aspect of this process is that we're surfacing them over and over now before we're too far into um, this movement and reorganization and um, new model that we can't deal with the scenario that's been placed in front of us that we can't make a decision on or that excuse me those ahead won't be able to make a decision about um, requesting um, proposals or looking at a common tool so um, I think the, the obstacle that comes up is we can't make quite the speed of delivery and timeline that they originally wanted. We, we keep holding them back because we're pushing forward these questions. And I'm going to go ahead and comment on Michelle's question. Um, I think one of the biggest things to plan for this in the project management of the design process is we didn't really have a project management plan going in. And um, we built it as we went. So having that ahead of time probably would have made it much easier for us. Yes, we didn't we had, really know where we were going when we started, so we didn't have a way to get there. Yeah, we had we had a vision, right? We had a vision that was laid out in this in this document that came out and then um, these committees moving forward, but um, it took a while to hire. And that's probably something like if they could have moved that up, it took a while to hire the project manager for the entire project. Um, and so by the time they came in, a lot of the committees had already been working. And so now that person had to kind of take what was there and start to put together a plan. So I would say, you know, is it ever going to be perfect? No, but getting a, a more, a better formed project plan and um, maybe having really loose groups that could possibly identify some dependencies ahead of that plan being formed um, because we sort of discovered it and we're hiring that project person all at the same time. So they came in to a mountain of, of data and issues and now have to kind of like backtrack in order to put it into place so that, um, and but once they did, then we, you know, the faculty advisory committee is going and we've got a student, you know, experience group. And, and so that work started to coalesce, but, um, and maybe some of the chaos of it is what's going to allow us to have a better model coming out. I can't tell you, but, um, but yes, uh, hiring that project management manager and that having that plan sort of a little more formalized earlier on earlier would have been nice yes yes <laughs> and I piggyback on that as well just because Michelle's question is kind of like well maybe what could have been done differently as well and you know when we were given an initial um, you know wish about when the project would be done it did come from top down so to mitigate some of that it might have been a good idea. It's something, you know, hindsight's 2020 to have those who might be doing the work have some input into what a realistic time frame might have looked like. Because I think that our group was pretty quick to push back and say, well, this is actually going to take a longer time. And that's a reason why we did kind of break off into a new group, right? So um, having that input earlier on might have set a, a more realistic goal on the front end. I think on a more minuscule or micro level uh, related to this question is project management sometimes is, is only possible once you know exactly where, where you're trying to get. Um, we still are a little bit unclear <laughs> on exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, and that's where those dependencies have, have come in. So uh, initially our project timeline was like two weeks. Here, throw this together, send it to me, and I'll present it to everyone else. But as we brought in um, all of our perspectives from the different campuses and colleges and um, online environments, 
we realized pretty quickly, like, okay, we need to clarify what we're doing. What exactly are they asking of us? So that I, I hopefully Lee Christopher helps <laughs> to know, um, being very clear when you, when you start a project on, okay, what are we doing? And if you don't know project management, probably that's your first step is analyzing. Okay. What are we doing? How are we doing it? Who's involved? Who's in charge? Who's our approver? Who's, who's our advocate? Who are our stakeholders? Um, that's probably the best place to start if you're starting in sort of an ambiguous place like we were. And I'm going I'm to jump in here just to answer Lee's last question. How does accessibility fit into your framework? It's very a very high priority for our framework to be as accessible as possible. And that's part of why we're talking about making sure that the home pages are consistent and that the number of clicks are the same depending on regardless of which course you go into. So that if you need accessibility, you're going to have that stuff built in as much as possible. And and beyond that, and beyond when, you, that yes. when you think about accessibility beyond our framework, right? Beyond really the, we'll call it the front door and the structure, right? When you start putting things into it, that's all um, down the road. It's determining the standards we're going to adhere to and the, and the, the training and the checklists that we provide to help those who are building their courses to assure that it's accessible and you know what are our recommendations going to be and where will they come from besides us about how we have um, some consistency and um, accessibility experts either to train right or to assist those at the colleges it will it be at the college level will be it will it be centralized those are all the items that are still to be determined but we it's like it's one of those questions that's right at the top right where where is it going to sit where is accessibility going to sit when someone's creating their own class and and using the framework and where is it going to sit when it's a built out class and they're going to take it and just make some modifications there's so many things that will have to be um, agreed to I think further down than where than the point that we are at right now. We have about three more minutes. We have one more question from Adam. Uh, how, did, <clears throat> how did your project manager react? Were they excited by some parts, felt some other parts were daunting and did they dive in with gusto or with some trepidation? Sounds as if they did help give some more order from the perspective of their position. Uh, I, I feel like I just have secondhand sort of yeah. observational experience. So does anyone else want to answer that? So just to clarify that we're talking about the project manager for the, the entire Colorado online project, um, the, the nice thing was that the person that we hired actually came from within the, the main project um, committee. So when they took applications, so the person was familiar with Colorado online and the work that had been done up to that point, and then they basically were hired in the project manager position, and then were able to hire, uh, excuse me, project uh, director position, pardon me, I'm using wrong terminology, and then they were able to hire a coordinator to help them. So I think she is excited because she's been seeing it uh, as a part of, as a committee member, and now she's in a place where she can kind of take that in and, and start to help to um, guide and assure that um, the right people have the right information and the right uh, timeline deadlines for, for getting answers to these questions on the dependencies. So did you want to tie it up, uh, Sophia, for are you? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate everyone coming to this session. Uh, thank you for listening to us, uh, learning from us, sharing with us. Uh, it's important for everyone to have these conversations and the Padlet is not going to close. So if you want to save that link or add your insights or responses, even after this session, please feel free. Uh, we know that this is, we're not the only ones that are going through this type of process and we're not the only people that will be implementing a combined structure of some sort in the next few years. 
So um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I think our, our emails we didn't put in here, but um, I can put mine in the chat right now and I can connect you with anyone on this panel uh, easily. If we can like all put that. them in the chat. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the main takeaways here is that it is possible to collaborate. It is possible to do it with technology that is shared from one institution or one system with many other systems. And it is possible to share the responsibility. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Stay well.